Hi, how are you feeling? Today we're going to do something new. It's coordinate geometry. But I'd like to show you that I'm going to take you from scratch. So it's not going to be so difficult for you. As you move on, you will find this chapter really interesting. And you will tell me, hey, come on, I need more challenging sums. That's what you're going to do. Because you would have a real thorough understanding of what coordinate geometry is all about right now let's look at this now this is a two plane when I say two planes it's on a level plane and you have the y-axis and the x-axis that's the y-axis and this is the x-axis you can call it two-dimensional now what these points are saying is that the position of where they are if this is y and that's the x-axis when we look at a a is x here 0 y is a 5 now let me make this a little bit more understanding now if you talk about this wall imagine this wall all right you have a flat area and let's take the y-axis as this n or maybe I should move here let's take the y-axis as this n the vertical line and then we take the x-axis this way have you got my direction the y-axis this way and the x-axis this way now this is this whole wall is two-dimensional unlike volume we talk about three-dimensional Alright, so we talk about two-dimensional. Now, when you have the y-axis and the x-axis, where the y meets the x, that's the zero, zero point, zero, zero. Now, when we have this, we're talking about position. When I want to tell you, hey, uh, there is a lizard at this point. Alright, so if we calibrate the y-axis and the x-axis, I can precisely tell you where it is so it is a matter of calibration how big my one unit to one unit is either side and if I go this way my X is negative that's my Y axis and if I go down below the X axis my Y is negative got it like here this is a negative X this is a positive X and here we have a positive Y and a negative Y. I freak out when I see a cockroach. Do you? All right. If you don't, fine. You know, you are a brave young man or young lady. All right. Somebody freak out when you see lizards. My friend, my girlfriend, very good friend, she screams when she sees a lizard and her eyes were fixed on the wall at the right spot where the lizard is. And she's always looking at that lizard where it's moving. So we want to talk about positioning. All right? That's coordinate geometry, positioning. When you have a fear, like for me, a cockroach, I'm looking at where the cockroach is moving. X-axis, Y-axis, how far away, or up. Oh my God, it's flying. Then it becomes not two-dimensional, it becomes three-dimensional. I run out of my room. <laughs> Now, so let's look at this positioning here. You've got it? This is 0, 0. All right. And that's the start point. And here, let me mark it. Uh -uh. And you look at A, up, 0, X is 0, Y is 5. We always write X, Y. All right. X first, then Y. So now if you look at B, it's along the x-axis 5 units away from 0, 0 and the y is just, you look at the y, there's no movement, so it's a 0. If you look at C, alright, C, the x is 5, x is 5 and y is also 5, 5 units away, up, 5 units up. Now, if you look at D, you can figure it out. One unit from the X and below the Y goes a minus two. Got to understand coordinates. Look at E. Oops, 
is the other end, all right, of the x-axis. So it's minus 4 and up 2 steps, plus 2. If you look at f, 4 minus 4, down, minus 2. So coordinates actually shows us position in a two dimension. Got it? Now that understanding will now help me, help you to find gradient, find the slope with respect to a point. So we need to know we want to find a slope. You just can't have a point finding a slope. You need two points to get a line. And what's the slope like? Is it no slope when it's just really horizontal? The gradient is a zero. When it's vertical, the gradient is infinity. All right? So we need two points to find a slope. Now let's move on and see how we find gradient. The gradient is actually one point of the y to another point. The rise, one y going to another y, and the run, all right, from x1 to x2. Let's take two points and find out the gradient, okay? Now let's look at here. Let me call this as G, 0, 0. And I'm going to join zero, G to C. What is the gradient of GC? All right? So we take this as X1, Y1, and this will be X2, Y2. So let's look at it. So we get the Y, 5 minus a 0 over 5 minus a 0 over 5 minus a zero. We go back to that. All right, you get a one. Or you can say this is your y2, all right, x2, y2, zero minus a five. And if you get back again to x2, zero minus a five. You get a minus five over a minus five. Minus divided by minus, will be 1. So in both cases, you get a 1. Alright? In both cases. Now, let's look at the interpretation of it. If I draw a line down, alright? From G to C. Alright, it goes 5 steps here, 5 steps here, that's the run, and the rise 5 steps up. So 5, over 5 will give you a 1. Got it? Now, if I were to find a gradient, like for example, AC. Now, do you see AC? Let me get a nice orange chalk. Alright? AC. Do you see any rise? No. And the run is yes, from 0, it went to 5. So if you look at AC, the gradient of AC, I put M as a gradient, AC 5 minus a 5, you look at always the, the Y axis first, and 5 minus a 0. You'll see you get a 0 over 5, which amounts to a 0. Got it? Now if you look at the gradient of CB, all right, or we can put it BC, BC, look at BC, maybe you want to start from here, 5, 0 minus a 5, and what do you get here, a X minus the other X, X1 minus X2, when we get this, we get a minus 5 over a 0, and that gives us infinity, got it? So because it's perpendicular, the slope is infinity. When here it is horizontal, the slope is a zero. I hope you've got that. And now let's look at more, more gradients. What happens if I join A to D? A to D. Oops, oops, oops. Let me get that neater. Alright, A to D. What 
is the gradient from A to D? You've got a point A and D. So the gradient of AD will be 5. Take away 5 minus minus 2. And you get 0 minus 1. Minus and minus will give us a plus. 7. 7 over minus 1 is a minus 7. That shows us that it has a negative gradient. Do you see that? So a negative gradient tells us this T fall, there is a fall, minus 7. Alright, now we move on from gradient to find out what happens if two gradients are perpendicular. When I talk about perpendicular, they're cutting at a point and they meet. And you look at that, these two gradients are perpendicular. If this gradient is M1 and this is M2, the product of the two gradients will be minus 1. Now that makes it a lot more easier because if you were to understand, all right, if I do a table for you, M1, M2, and you will see that the product will be equal to minus 1. If this gradient M1 is a half, what is M2 going to be? All right, half times your M2 will be a minus 1. If you want to find out what's M2, you bring your 2 up. So your M2 will be a minus 2. And do you see it? And when you multiply these two, half times minus 2, can cancel it off and you get a minus 1. That's a little trick that I like to share with you. Now, if this gradient is 2 thirds, what you do is very simple. Flip it, 2 thirds becomes a 3 over 2 and put a minus. Because when you multiply, you get a minus 1. Now, if this gradient, for example, is minus 3, what do you do? It's minus 3 over 1. Flip it, you get a 1 third. And when you put a minus to it, it becomes a plus. Alright, just put a minus to it. And when you see, when you multiply these two, you get a 1. Do you see how easy it is? With M1, M2 equal to minus 1. That's a very important formula. Now we now move on to midpoint. What do we mean by midpoint? A midpoint is a point with equidistance. Alright? And if I look at here, I've got a point here. X is 0, Y is 2, and I have a point here. X is 6, Y is 7. Hey, what, how do you interpret that to be? X is 0, Y is 2, this is 8. Here, X is 6, Y is 7. Alright, so that's X and this is Y. If you look at the midpoint M, it's between A and B. Do you see it? And if you look at the horizontal distance, is from 0 to 6 and halfway is 3 points 3, 3 so your X will be 3 and if you look at your A, B A to B if I were to superimpose bring this line point back you could see that a distance between this alright this is 7 and this is 2 it's a 5 unit 2 to 7 5 units. So if you divide it by 2, it'd be 2 and a half. 5 divided by 2. So that's 2 and a half. So what you do is you move this 2. Here is a 2. You add another 2 and a half. So this whole distance is 2 and a half. This is a 2. You get a 4 and a half. So your n will be x is 3, y is 4 and a half. Got it. Let me give you a little more examples. But there is a formula to do it. What is the formula? The x will be 
x1 plus x2 divided by 2. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Alright, so this is your x1, y1 here. 0, 2 is your x2, y2. Let me put that here clearly. x2, y2. So you add your x's. 6 plus 0 divided by 2. As for the y, 7 plus 2 divided by 2. Do you see what you get? You get a 3 and a 4 and a half. 3, 7 plus 2, 9. 9 divided by 2, 4 and a half. So that's what you get for the midpoint. Now let's see more midpoints and practice them. Alright, let's go back to where we did earlier on the coordinates and see if you could recognize the midpoints. What will be the midpoint of BC? Midpoint, if you look at it, at the x are 5 plus 5 divided by 2. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is a 5. And then if you look at the y's, 5 plus 0, which is 5. You divide it by 2. You get a 2 and a half. That's one midpoint. If you look at this, could you be able to guess it? What is this midpoint? They share the same y. Alright? So the y will still be 5. But how does that work out to be? Let's find out. Your x. 0 plus 5. We use the formula midpoint x1 plus x2 divided by 2. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Right? So 0 plus 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half. And as for your y, 5 plus 5, 10. 10 divided by 2, it is still 5. It's still lying on that same line. Alright? So I hope you've got a better understanding of midpoint, gradient, and if two lines cut at perpendicular, they're perpendicular to each other, the product is a minus 1. We'll come to more rules in coordinate geometry to facilitate you in the doing of the exercises.